Why we're lucky to have sharks? First of all, I will be very happy if you like my video and subscribe. Thank you. Sharks are widely respected by people, but that doesn't always mean their presence is appreciated. We tend to focus on the small chance of being bitten, overlooking the valuable benefits these ancient fish have to offer. Of more than 375 known shark species, only about 30 are known to have attacked a human, and even these species pose little risk overall. Millions of people enter the ocean every year, yet the global yearly average for unprovoked shark attacks is 75, fewer than 10 of which are fatal. The odds of a shark attack are roughly 1 in 11 million, much lower than other beach hazards like rip currents, lightning or boats. Sharks, on the other hand, have very good reasons to fear us. Humans kill an estimated 100 million sharks every year, largely due to fishing, finning and accidental bycatch. Combined with less direct threats like climate change and overfishing of prey species, this is raising serious concerns about the future of some shark species. And the decline of sharks is not just an academic or ethical issue. Sharks play important roles in ocean ecosystems and have also become a useful source of biomimicry. If sharks' recent troubles don't improve soon, we could end up learning to appreciate their presence the hard way. In hopes of shedding more light on the bright side of sharks, here are a few ways that benefit people. Sharks help regulate marine food webs. A hammerhead shark navigates Costa Rica's Cocos Islands National Park. Over the past 400 million years or so, sharks have evolved to eat interdependent relationships with their ecosystems. These systems consist of complex food webs, often with sharks at the top as apex predators. Like tigers, wolves and other top-level predators, many sharks are keystone species, which means they play such key roles that their disappearance would significantly alter the ecosystem. Along the US Atlantic coast, for example, Overfishing between 1970 and 2005 led to the collapse of several large shark populations. Scalloped hammerhead and tiger sharks may have declined by more than 97%. While smooth hammerhead, bull and dusky sharks fell by more than 99%. This led to an explosion of prey species once suppressed by those predators including hordes of cow nose rays that wiped out North Carolina's bay scallop fishery, researchers found. Studies have revealed similar dynamics elsewhere, too. Off the coast of Brazil, a 2014 study found that tiger sharks, dusky sharks, sand tiger sharks, scalloped hammerheads and smooth hammerheads are species with large ecological function values and may exert a powerful influence over lower levels of the food web. And in Australia, a 2013 study found that as shark numbers shrank, mid-sized predators like snapper increased while smaller, algae-eating fish faded. Sharks protect coral reefs and seagrass beds. A black tip reef shark swims amid coral off the coast of Queensland, Australia. As they've evolved along with their ecosystems over time, many sharks have grown so influential their mere presence seems to protect the habitat. In the 2013 study mentioned above, the loss of big, predatory sharks at coral reefs off northwestern Australia correlated with the rise of mesopredators like snapper and a decline of small herbivorous fish. With fewer grazers around, algae can overwhelm the reef system and limit its ability to rebound from stress like bleaching. Sharks have been shown to protect other kinds of ocean ecosystems, too, in some cases by hunting herbivores instead of helping them. That's the case in Western Australia's Shark Bay, where a long-term study of tiger sharks has found benefits similar to those of apex predators on land. When seagrass beds were struggling after a 2011 heat wave, they recovered more quickly in areas where tiger sharks roam, 
since the sharks scared away grass-eating sea turtles and dugongs. The sharks don't even need to kill to have this effect. Fear alone can change how herbivores forage. It's all about how predators and prey interact. Florida International University, FIU, scientist Mike Hyval said in a statement, Just the fear of sharks can be enough, in many cases, to keep a marine ecosystem healthy and able to respond to stresses. Some sharks help mitigate climate change. Fear of tiger sharks can help deter herbivores from overgrazing on seagrass. Tiger sharks' protection of seagrass may ripple far beyond the beds themselves. While seagrass beds occupy less than 0.2% of the planet's oceans, they account for more than 10% of all carbon absorbed annually by ocean water. Per unit area, these underwater meadows can store up to twice as much carbon as Earth's temperate and tropical forests, according to FIU seagrass expert James Falkrian. Coastal seagrass beds hold up to 83,000 metric tons of carbon per square kilometre, mostly in the soils beneath them. A typical forest on land, by comparison, can store about 30,000 metric tons per square kilometre, mostly in the tree's wood. Losing these meadows not only disrupts the local ecosystems where they grew, but also removes the valuable buffer against global greenhouse gas pollution. Sharks are worth more alive than dead. In Australia alone, while shark tourism is worth roughly even million dollars per year, although large numbers of sharks are hooked or netted accidentally as bycatch, Humans also widely hunt them for their meat and their fins, a key ingredient in the Chinese delicacy shark fin soup. It's really a good idea to eat shark meat or cartilage, however, since the predators are especially prone to bioaccumulation of heavy metals like mercury. And despite the purported health effects of shark fins, which are relatively flavorless, there's no evidence to suggest they confer any benefit. Shark fins can fetch notoriously high prices, yet that one-time payoff for a bland chunk of cartilage still pales in comparison with the value a live shark can generate during its lifetime. Aside from the economic effects of their ecological roles, certain shark species are tourist magnets, and as long as they're part of a responsible ecotourism industry, they can provide a major boost for local economies. Australia for instance, has four major shark tourism industries, Great White, Grey Nurse, Reef and Whale Sharks, worth a combined $25.5 million per year, according to a 2017 study. At South Airy Atoll in the Maldives, Whale Shark Tours brought in $7.6 million in 2012 and $9.4 million in 2013. Reef shark tourism adds roughly $18 million per year to the economy of Palau, a 2011 study found, which is 8% of the country's gross domestic product. Each of about 100 sharks in Palau's top dive spots is thus worth $179,000 a year, totaling $1.9 million over its lifetime. If each shark's meat and fins would sell for $108, as the researchers estimated, that means tourism appeal alone can make some sharks 17,000 times more valuable alive than dead. Sharks are inspiring better airplanes and wind turbines. Although sharks are still killed for their meat and fins, there's also a growing push to steal concepts and designs from wildlife instead of just taking the wildlife itself. That includes things like imitation shark fin soup, but also far more advanced ideas that can improve a wide array of technology. Known as biomimicry, this has rapidly gained popularity in recent years, drawing inspiration from all kinds of creatures. With sharks, the focus of biomimicry is mainly on V-shaped, tooth-like scales known as denticles. Scientists have been studying these scales for decades, and as Harvard University researchers reported in 2018, 
Denticles offer powerful aerodynamic qualities by both reducing drag and increasing lift.